Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, and you may have seen from the title of this video that we are doing freezer cooking, meal prep for baby number two. Now this is not my baby, this is my best friend's baby. We've been friends since we were six years old and she just had her second baby two days ago. Today actually, September 6th was the due date and this was the day I was planning to do all the cooking and she had the baby on the fourth so I need to get going and get this cooked for her. This is actually my baby shower gift for her is doing all this meal prep so she doesn't have to worry about food for the next few days. Now, the way I went about doing this is I asked her, what do you want to eat? Are there things you want, don't want, things like that? It's six dinners to have, and then we are gonna be doing some breakfast that I decided to do that she doesn't know about yet, and I have some dessert ideas. So what we're gonna be doing is we are gonna be making some lasagna, sweet potato chickpea curry. That curry is actually gonna be a vegetarian curry. We're gonna be doing soup Toscana, which is like the Olive Garden soup. I've never done a freezer meal with soup, so I'm kind of curious to see how this goes but I've seen other you know, YouTube videos on it, so it should be fine. I decided to do some breakfast stuff for her. She doesn't know about that yet. I'm gonna do a breakfast Amish casserole that is phenomenal. Oh my gosh, that's so good. We are gonna do French toast. I've got some beautiful bread from a local bakery that we're gonna make French toast with. And then I'm gonna do some zucchini muffins because the zucchini out in the garden is going crazy. And we are gonna be doing some dessert. I'm gonna be doing molasses cookies that chocolate chip molasses cookies that I talked about in the how to make your own brown sugar video and I kept saying I was gonna make it, I was gonna make it and we're gonna make them today. And the other cookies we are gonna be doing are brown butter cookies. All the recipes you're gonna find for today's video are gonna be linked down in the description on scratchpantry.com. The only recipe that is not is gonna be the brown butter chocolate chip cookies. That recipe is in the American Test Kitchen Cooking School book. I've talked about this book before. It is my absolute favorite cookbook. If you wanna learn the fundamentals on cooking and how to become a really, really good cook and learn those skills so you can actually kind of break away from recipes, this is the cookbook you want. The America's Test Kitchen Cooking School. I'm gonna link this book down in the description box. Chocolate chip cookies are hard. I've had a hard time finding a good recipe that makes a, re a really soft chocolate chip cookie that's kind of pillowy and this is the recipe. So this is my go-to chocolate chip recipe. It's the only one I use and it is phenomenal. Now my friend, this is her second baby. So she does have a two-year-old and she is a fantastic eater. So I don't need to worry that she won't like any of these meals. I'm pretty sure she will eat all of this. These are onions that I grew in my garden. These are Walla Walla onions. And I really need to get these cooked up because Walla Walla onions are not long-term savers, so these aren't gonna stay in my pantry very long, and so I have probably about 40 pounds that I need to go through. So whatever I don't use today, I might take this afternoon to chop up and put in the freezer. I just splashed onion juice in my eye. <laughs> All right. I wanna mention a few other things I did to prep before we do this big cooking day. I am a big proponent of getting your dishwasher emptied anytime you come into the kitchen. That way, when you're cooking, I can go ahead and just put dishes right into the dishwasher and I don't have to worry about just piling stuff up into my sink. Another thing I did this morning is I took my garbage can out from under my sink. Normally my garbage can is under there. And because we have dogs, our dogs actually used to get into that area and pull stuff out of the garbage and I would throw the same thing right four or five times. So we had to put a baby proof and there's a magnet on it. It's kind of hard to open. So what I like to do is put my garbage can here. I like to empty it so it's ready to go so I can just put stuff right in there. And then I also like to keep a compost bin out and I put any of my like vegetable scraps or anything like that in here so that I can either go bring this to the chickens when we're done cooking or I can put it in the compost bin. So those are just a few of my tips that are like game changers for me that when I started doing that, it made spending time in the kitchen a lot more enjoyable. So let's see what we need to do next. So I put a bunch of onions in here and then I had yesterday, we had pizza with onions and peppers and we had some leftovers. So I'm gonna put those in here. And this pot, the onions are gonna be for the Amish casserole. The casserole doesn't actually call for red peppers, but a little red pepper in an Amish casserole sounds really good. So we're gonna get this going. This is gonna be for the red sauce for the lasagna. And then I'm gonna take some of that out for the Amish casserole. And then over here, we're gonna start the curry. So I got some, onions chopped up. One of the cool things though is a lot of the recipes actually call for bacon and if you watch my last freezer cooking video I cooked a bunch of bacon so we don't have to worry about cooking any bacon today which is not my favorite thing to do 
A couple of the recipes call for some sausage, which I already have sausage cooked up because I did that in the last freezer cooking video. So we have a lot of things already done that I don't actually have to prep. I mean, it's gonna be a busy day today, but it's gonna be fun. It's actually Labor Day today, and one of my favorite things to do is spend time in the kitchen. So if I have a day off from work, what better than to spend time in the kitchen and be able to bless my friend with some beautiful meals that she doesn't have to worry about after just giving birth to her second baby. I am peeling up the sweet potatoes now for the sweet potato curry. I have sweet potatoes growing out in my garden and this is the first year I've ever grown sweet potatoes and I have no idea when they're supposed to be harvested. I just need to do a Google search, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> But this video is probably gonna come out before it's ready to harvest those potatoes. So if you guys have any idea of when sweet potatoes are supposed to be harvested, I'd greatly appreciate that if you'd left that in the comments for me. You guys are so sweet. You tell me all the time that you are learning so much from me, but there's only one of me and there's so many of you beautiful faces out there. And I just learn an incredible amount from you guys. It is phenomenal. Appreciate every single one of your comments. I'm gonna go wash these. I don't think I mentioned that I am doubling each recipe so that she will have two of everything. So she'll have two curries, two lasagnas, two soupa descanas, so that she will have six dinners and she can decide when and how she wants to make them. When she had her first baby, I went over to her house and we cooked, oh, probably 15 or 20 meals, but that just wasn't gonna happen this year with just between her life and my life and what's going on. So I wanted to make sure I got freezer meals in her freezer because she didn't have time to do them either. I wanted to make sure that she had freezer meals in her freezer. I know how much they save me and I don't have little kids running around, so I can't even imagine mom of two and all of that and trying to figure all that out and worrying about food. Even though we couldn't coordinate to do it together, I wanted to make sure she got freezer meals in her freezer, home cooked beautiful meals. So I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna do them and I'll do them for her so she doesn't have to worry about it. All right, so we got our sweet potatoes done. I have some beautiful homegrown garlic here. We are gonna peel, I'm gonna peel a bunch of it because we need it for a bunch of recipes. And I'll get a bunch chopped up so that I can just do it one time and not have to worry about it for all the different recipes. So time to move to the next step. The onions and peppers for the Amish casserole are done. So I'm gonna take some out of this pot here and we'll save the rest to make the red sauce here. And the curry here, this is gonna be the curry and we need to start adding some spices and seasonings into here. All right, so let's put in ginger. You always, when you're making curry, you wanna add your spices to the oil and onions. I just added some coriander and this is some cumin. Most of the spices, the, the actual flavoring of the spices, these are fat soluble, meaning they dissolve in fat. And that's why you wanna toast them in oil before you add your liquid, because if you add them to water, they're not water soluble, so you won't release as many of the flavor compounds if you do it that way. So we're gonna toast these spices. So we put cumin, ginger, and coriander in there, and now I'm gonna add some seasoned salt. This is just some homemade seasoned salt. If you want the recipe, it is on scratchpantry.com. Add some seasoned salt. This is looking a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut oil. Now we're gonna add our curry paste. This is my favorite curry paste. This is just some red curry paste. And we wanna toast the curry paste as well. I'm gonna add the whole jar, which is four ounces. And then I found this roasted red chili paste. I found this last time I did a freezer cooking video was the first time I used this. And this is so good. And I'm, this is a four ounce container and I'm gonna add half of this. It's not spicy. I think it's fermented because it's got a really funky flavor, and I think that is really the secret ingredient. My dad's calling. Hey, Dad. Okay, love you, bye. All right, this is smelling incredible. So the next step here, I'm gonna let this toast for just another minute, and we're gonna add some garlic that I chopped. 
Now that this curry has cooked for a few minutes and it smells fragrant, we're gonna add all of our chopped up sweet potato and we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. This is homemade chicken broth, but you can use whatever you have. We're gonna put the lid on here and we're gonna let the potato soften. And now let's move on to our spread sauce. I'm gonna start by just adding some herbs. This is oregano. This is some basil and some red pepper flakes, not too many. So I did some canning this weekend and I canned up pizza sauce, which is basically just marinara sauce that's thicker. And I'm gonna go ahead and add these because this one didn't seal, so I had to put it in the refrigerator right away. And this one didn't fit in the canner and I didn't feel like running a canner just for one pint. So we're gonna put both of these in here. So these are already seasoned. And we're gonna add two jars of just crushed tomatoes. These are tomatoes I canned last year. And then I have here some cooked sausage that I cooked in the last freezer meal. And I'm just gonna have this warm through, thicken up just a little bit, and then this will be ready to use in the lasagna. I need mozzarella cheese for the lasagna, and then I need for the Amish casserole some sweet cheese, and I need some cheddar cheese chopped up. I buy my cheddar cheese and mozzarella from Azure Standard the last few times, and I've been really happy with it. I can link it down in the description box below. I always shred my cheese. I don't like buying pre-shredded cheese. I like to buy it in blocks and then shred it myself so it doesn't have that coating on it. I feel like it's just a better product. But when you do that, the easiest way to get it shredded up is to use your food processor. Anytime I have my food processor out and I'm grating cheese, I just grate a ton of it and then I put it in the fridge and I use it for later recipes. So I'm kind of batch shredding cheese. We're gonna make the filling, the white part of the lasagna. I have ricotta. Parmesan, some homemade pesto that was in the fridge that needs to be eaten up, so we're just gonna add that to that. Pepper. enough actually to do four dinners for lasagnas uh, that's just how I cook I tend to cook a lot <laughs> and so I've got four out I have two for my friend and two for Josh and I so I'll just put these in the freezer not that we need any freezer meals right now but I think there's enough for it so let's assemble We have officially finished one meal, which we got four lasagnas, which is absolutely crazy. I was not intending to make four lasagnas because I have so many freezer meals in my freezer already, but lasagna is one of those things that if you're gonna make it, you might as well make a bunch of it. Now that we've finished the lasagna, we are about to finish the curry. The potatoes are almost all the way cooked through. Oops, spilling stuff. They're soft, but they're still a little, they're soft, but firm, if that makes any sense. I don't wanna cook them all the way to soft because they're gonna be frozen and then reheated. We're gonna add a little lemon juice. If you had lime juice, I would add lime juice, but I don't have any, so that's what we're adding. I rinsed out the Dutch oven that we made the pizza, or the lasagna sauce in, so that we can make the supa de scana in there. And I'm opening up coconut milk. I should be adding two cans of chickpeas, but I only have one can, so that's what we're adding. I had two, I would add two in here. I added probably one extra sweet potato, so in the end, it'll all even itself out. The 
this just needs to thicken a little bit and then this curry is done and we got another meal done. I have some parsley here that I froze and I'm just gonna chop this up and get this in here. If you had cilantro, that would be really good. I just don't have any right now. I'm gonna wrap it in foil a few times, write what it is, and then we will let it cool completely before I stick it in the freezer. One of these is gonna be for dinner for us tonight. That's one nice thing about when you're doing batch cooking like this, is you can try to get your dinner and all this extra cooking done at the same time. And that way I don't have to thaw one of the freezer meals I've already cooked. We are gonna make the Amish casserole now. We have one bag of shredded potatoes here. This is a big bag, so I think I have to double this. Yes, we are doubling this recipe. We have potatoes, cottage cheese, the onions and peppers. I'm gonna add this parsley because I have it. This was parsley that I put in the refrigerator from the garden and I forgot about it and it was it got frozen in the refrigerator so I just threw it in the freezer. This will be perfect in here. We're gonna add 12 eggs. Ah! Shoot. Egg down. I'm gonna have to take just a second to clean that up. Back at it. We have some of our pre-cooked bacon here. This is why I love to have pre-cooked bacon in the freezer. We're gonna put cheddar cheese in here and Swiss cheese. And mix to combine. I almost forgot to season. We have some seasoned salt and a lot of pepper. This made way more than I was expecting. Again, so I have a pan out for Josh and I. I'm actually gonna cook this today for us and we'll eat this for breakfast for the week. And then for my friend, I have two little nine by nines and I will give her two so she can have two separate breakfast casseroles. I'm gonna put a little black pepper on the top. Two more things done. I'm regrouping. So I got a bunch of the baking stuff out because we're going to be getting ready to do some baking in just a minute. I'm going to have myself a little bit of lunch. I had some rice in the fridge, so I figured I'm going to just warm that up and have a little bit of the curry. I need the sweet because I broke and spilled an entire jar of spices on my stove. So got to clean that up. And I started loading the dishwasher again and I started rinsing out some of the dishes. So when I wash those by hand, when we're all done, it'll be a lot easier because the food won't have hardened onto it. So. Let's just get tidying up. I like to clean as I go so that it doesn't become overwhelming at the end and just get so, so, so bad. Plus I broke some glass so I need to sweep anyway. I actually got on the stove. I'm gonna start cooking the soup of Descana. So I warmed up some oil and I put the onions in there and those are cooking. And we're gonna get the soup cooking here in just a minute after, or assembled, I should say, after I get this cleaned up here. I just threw the garlic in there. I almost forgot to peel the potatoes for the soup of Descana. These are homegrown russet potatoes. He 
These are home canned chicken broth. If you want to know how to, if you want to learn how to can your own chicken broth, I do have a video on this. It is linked up here, and I'll link it down in the description box. I am opening my last two jars, which means we will be canning more chicken broth soon. I'm gonna have to wait till the end of harvest season, but sometime we are gonna be canning up some more chicken broth. Now we're just gonna let this simmer until the potatoes get halfway soft. I buy all my baking goods in bulk and I just had to buy another 50 pound bag of sugar and so I just refilled my five gallon bucket and now I am just using the leftovers to fill my pantry container if you want to know where I buy all my bulk baked goods, I'll link them down in the description box. Moving on to the muffins. I just did that backwards. I'm supposed to do one cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of white sugar, but oh well. We're just going to go with it. Ah! Second egg I've dropped today. Annoying. <laughs> Shoot. Let's not do that again. This is homemade vanilla. I do have a video on this as well if you want to know how to make your own homemade vanilla. I like this zucchini recipe because it calls for four cups of zucchini, which is a lot. baking soda. So I put cinnamon in and this is ginger. Now nutmeg. So I don't make muffins ever. I actually bought these muffin tins just to make these. I thought my friend's daughter would enjoy having muffins better than like zucchini bread or something. And I bought myself these little cups. The reason I hate making muffins is because I hate cleaning these things. So I bought some paper things, some muffin liners, and then I just sprayed them. So hopefully they come out really well because I'm not the best muffin maker. I have the oven preheated to 350. Now I'm gonna clean between the muffins. So I can either clean around these muffins now before they bake, or I can clean around this on this muffin tin once they're baked. And then it's gonna be way harder to clean the baked muffin mixture and oil off this muffin tin. The zucchini muffins are in the oven. Let's get going on now to the ginger chocolate chip cookies. I sprayed my measuring cup with cooking spray so that it would release really easily and make cleanup a lot easier. baking soda, ginger, cinnamon, clove, salt.
These are perfect. I might like making muffins if I use spray and muffin liners. That's so easy. Hot. Whew. Oh yeah, this looks so good. If only you could smell this. It smells so good. So we're gonna eat this for breakfast this week. Might even eat it for dinner tonight. Let's go ahead and get this soup finished up. We are almost done with this soup and then we'll roll out those molasses cookies. I have some homegrown kale here that was just in the freezer. One of my favorite ways to uh, preserve kale is just wash it, put it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the freezer. There might actually be some beet greens in here too. They probably didn't need to be broken up so much. I could have left them a little bit wholer. We're gonna let that cook for a little bit and then we'll add the heavy cream. These are too soft. I'm gonna put them in the fridge just for a minute before I roll them out. We are gonna do the brown butter chocolate chip cookies now. Well, the ginger cookies cool in the refrigerator. It's on 612. It's their chocolate chip recipe and it is phenomenal. We're gonna start browning the butter. I'm doubling the recipe, so it's gonna look like a lot of butter, and it is. We're gonna get the soup finished up by adding heavy cream. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt and pepper, and we are gonna call that soup done. Okay, I'm gonna turn my butter down. When you're making brown butter, you want to watch it because it will burn. What you're doing is there's protein in the butter and that's what those little white flecks are. Ghee is butter that has been clarified. So all the butter proteins are taken out and it's just the oil. But when you're making brown butter, you want those proteins in there and you want to toast them. Basically the Maillard reaction. If you've watched any of my videos, I talk about Maillard reaction all the time. And that's what you're doing when you're making brown butter. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's almost there, not quite yet though. This is where you do not want to walk away or you will burn your brown butter. So I was just cleaning the stove while I was waiting for this. This is done. It's kind of hard to see, but there is brownness in there. The cool thing about this recipe is you don't have to have softened butter when you make it. So here's our brown butter. You can kind of see now how it's a different color. We're gonna add a little bit more butter. I have everything else pre-measured. I have my vanilla and eggs here. I have my butter, baking soda, salt here. My brown sugar here. We're gonna let this sit. All right, it is time to move on to the next step with the chocolate chip cookies. We have everything measured out, so it should be pretty easy. I'm 
I'm gonna put this in the fridge and then we'll roll it out. these cookies out of the oven and uh, something was wrong with them I mean they look good we'll definitely eat them I'm gonna let them cool in the cookie sheet for a few minutes before I take them off but these um, don't look right I don't think when I doubled the recipe that I I think I measured something wrong so if you are gonna make these just make sure you follow the recipe exactly just like when you're baking this is why I am not, I wouldn't call myself a baker because I do have a hard time following the recipe exactly and I much more enjoy cooking because it's more fluid and forgiving. These I think are going to be, I don't know, I think they might be crispy a little bit instead of really soft. Normally they're pretty like doughy and soft. So I'm going to let them cool on here for a few minutes and then I'll take them off and put them on a cooling rack. I just rolled out some of the chocolate chip cookie doughs and let's see if we did better with these. I just took the chocolate chip cookies out of the oven and they didn't flatten as much as they normally do. So I think when I doubled this recipe, I think I also messed up when I doubled. I think I must have added too much flour. I'm not sure they taste really good. I had a piece of one, but this doesn't look like how they normally look when they come out of the oven. So my strong suit is not doubling cookie recipes. I need to work on that apparently. So, oh well, we'll still eat them and they'll still be really good. I'm really glad with all the progress we got done. I'm super happy with how the muffins went. I have everything wrapped up, everything is cool. I'm gonna start putting it in the freezer. I have one of the lasagnas in the oven and we're gonna have that for dinner tonight so I don't have to worry about cooking. I have the breakfast casserole out that was cooked and I'm gonna package that up in just a few minutes and we're gonna eat that for breakfast for the rest of the week so we don't have to worry about that. We did have a few extra muffins. I'm gonna keep some of these muffins out and we'll just eat them for snacks or whatever. Now that these have cooled, they actually look pretty good. They smell fantastic and they're or, they're more like a ginger snap cookie than like a soft cookie that i was expecting which is fine that we'll still eat them and we'll really enjoy them they're just not the cookie that i'm used to making i make these cookies all winter long and they just didn't come out so i need practice on doubling recipes i think filming and doubling recipes and baking i need to work on because it's definitely not my strong suit yet but i will get there thank you guys for hanging out with me and bearing with it we will I'll, you know i'll freeze these cookie doughs and we'll eat them and they'll be really good but I'm just a little bummed. What I'm gonna do next time when I double recipes is I am gonna make sure I write down what the actual double recipe is on the side so that I don't mistakenly maybe double half of it and don't double one of the ingredients or something like that because I think that's what happened. So I will leave the correct recipes down in the description box. The meals here are completely cool and they're ready to go in the freezer. I decided not to make the um, French toast because I'm getting a little bit tired. This is all gonna cool. I'm gonna throw it in the freezer and then it'll be ready to go to bring to my friend's house for dinner. Even though we had a couple mishaps, we had a couple of really good successes. I'm happy with how everything turned out. The muffins I'm thrilled with. I never make muffins because I have never bought those like muffin liners and that's a game changer. And I think I'm gonna start making muffins more because that was too easy. I have the kitchen almost all tidied up. The only thing I need to do are some dishes. I have my dishwasher, it was running, but I stopped it so I could talk to you. I'm gonna get that going and then I'm gonna wash a few dishes by hand. I've mopped and swept the floor. So I'm basically done in here. I just need to put all this stuff in the freezer and then I'm gonna go, well, I was gonna say go relax, but I need to go edit a video and then I'll relax. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as I made all these meals for my friend for her second baby. I hope she really enjoys them and I'm super excited to be able to bring these to her and I hope that they are helpful for her so that she can kind of relax and just enjoy having her second baby at home. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in my kitchen again today. If you guys enjoyed this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos will pop up right here. You can go watch those if you'd like. And if you're new, consider subscribing. I hope you guys are having a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.